Hello and welcome to this session in which we'll discuss the concept of transportation expense. In the prior session, we differentiated between the deductions or expenses for self-employed individual and employee. Remember, self-employed individuals, they are basically independent contractors. They deduct those expenses on Schedule C. If you're an employee and you incur some of these expenses, they are deducted on Schedule A. And what do, we, what do we know about Schedule A, itemized deduction, the miscellaneous ones? They are suspended from year 2018 to year 2025. 2025. So in this session, we'll focus specifically on transportation expense to see how a self-employed individual will deduct those on Schedule C and how would an employee deduct those on Schedule A starting year 2026. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So what is transportation expense? The first thing you want to know, it's not travel. Travel is totally different. We're going to have a whole session about travel. Transportation expense, the definition of it is the cost of transportation the self-employed or employee from one place to another in the course of business. Now you have to be very careful. Home to business is a commuting expense. To go from your home where you live, if you're an employee, to your business place, that's com commuting expense. That's not deductible. We have to be careful here. Also, transportation expenses, I mentioned, do not involve overnight lodging. Once you get to the overnight lodging, we're talking about travel. Travel is handled separately. However, if we have transportation expense that's deductible, whether you are self-employed or an employee, what would you would include? You would include parking, tax, taxi fares like Uber, Lyft, automobile expenses, which we'll talk about those, and tolls. Let's talk about commuting expense. Commuting is not deductible. Why? Because the government don't want to subsidize your commuting. So simply put, you might have a home, not you might, you will have a home where you live. Then from home, you commute to work. Going from home to work, that's not deductible. Why? Because the if, it, if it was deductible, the further you live away from the home, the, the more benefit you get, which is the government don't want to get involved in this. Now, commuting between jobs, as an employee, it's a deductible expense. So I used to live in Fort Lee, New Jersey, and I would commute to the Pocono in Pennsylvania. And my commute was around 80 miles to the Pocono. This was not deductible. Then some days I will go up to the Pocono, then I will drive from the Pocono to another campus for work as an employee in Bethlehem, PA. I would still be in Bethlehem, PA. Well, from work to work, this is commuting. This is commuting between jobs. I used to commute around 30 miles. Then I'll go back from Bethlehem back to the Fort Lee. I will take another road and it will take me around 90 miles. Okay. Now, going back from work to home, that's not deductible. This is commuting. But from, from, from work to work, that's deductible. Remember, it's deductible on Schedule A. Remember, it's an itemized deduction. Remember, you cannot use it from year 2018 to 2025. Also, temporary workstation. Another example. When I work in a CPA firm, I used to work. I would go from home. I'm going to keep Bethlehem because I used to work in Bethlehem. I would go from Easton, PA. My home was Easton, PA, Easton, PA, I would commute from Easton, PA to Bethlehem, PA, going from home to work. Well, that's commuting. That's not deductible. I was an employee. Then once I get to Easton, PA, for example, I would start, I work two, three hours. Then I will visit a client in Allentown. 
that's going from work to work that is deductible deductible expense why it's between workstation now if a taxpayer has a home office that qualifies as principal place of business simply put let's assume I am a CPA now I am a CPA in my office in my home and I'm a CPA I'm self-employed I'm not I don't work for a CPA company I don't work for a CPA firm I'm self-employed now when I go visit a client anywhere that is deductible that is deductible because I'm self-employed the transportation between home and various work locations are deductible this is not com commuting I'm going from my place of business to the client that's visiting a client that's totally different let's talk about automobile expense deduction automobile expenses you could either use the actual cost or automatic mileage method so how do you deduct well you would say I'm gonna keep track of my actual cost which is keeping track of a lot or keeping track of my automatic mileage which also keeping track of a lot there's apps now for that okay at actual cost when do we use the actual cost if you had a large expenditure that year actual cost might be more beneficial you will deduct the actual cost of operating an automobile like what what will be the actual cost insurance tolls parking gas service maintenance due to auto club repairs tires and other parts you just keep track of those and part of that depending on the percentage that you use it for business your vehicle for business it's deductible this is the actual cost or you could use the automatic or the standard mileage method you can keep track of this using an app called the trip log or quickbooks self-employed for 2023 the mileage is 0.656 per mile now bear in mind you could be listening to this recording in 2024 2027 I don't know what year this will be different so don't panic it will change actually sometimes it could change within the same year so I'm just telling you it's how many miles you drove business miles times the percentage that the IRS gives you I'm just giving you this as an example you would all you would add to the automatic mileage method you would add to that direct expenses and we're gonna see what the direct expenses are you need to know what the direct expenses if we have direct expenses it means we have indirect ones direct expenses are expenses that are incurred specifically for this client I'll give you an example you remember I told you I used to work in Bethlehem PA we had many clients in New Jersey across the river so to go from Pennsylvania to New Jersey I have to cross the bridge and I would have to pay a toll to go into the other state to visit that client well the toll that I pay was specific to the client directly related to business that's also deductible with the automatic mileage any parking I paid to visit that client specifically gets added you know cross the bridge any tolls I pay is those are direct expenses indirect expenses are expenses related to the total usage of the car like insurance you need to have insurance for the car whether you use it for personal or for business that's a total total expense inspect the car you need to inspect the car and you're gonna have to pay for that well this is whether you use the car for business or personal you need inspection repairs same thing depreciation those are expenses that are not specific they are not tied because you have that client you have to have them because you have to have the car okay those are both expenses that are both related to the business and personal usage those are the indirect expenses so you can deduct you could always deduct the direct expenses in addition to your automatic mileage or you can use the actual cost which would look at an example to see how it works let's take a look at this example Adam who works as a self-employed professional primarily use his car for business about 80% of the time sometimes that percentage is not given sometimes they tell you you drove the car 50,000 miles of which 40,000 is business okay if you're not told this you take 40 divided by 50 and that's 80% but here I gave you it's 80% but sometimes it's not giving you have to know how to compute that in 20x3 he accumulated 15,000 miles specifically for business purposes and here are the expenses associated with the vehicle the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna start with the easy part compute the automatic mileage and we're gonna assume for this year it's 0.656 we're gonna take uh, the 15,000 miles 15,000 miles times 0.656 plus 
all the direct expenses. Auto insurance, is that direct or indirect? That's indirect. Penn Turnpike tolls for the road to visit business related. Well, we're gonna have to add those, 250. Parking for business purposes, that's another direct cost. Triple A membership, which is a membership uh, in case something happened, they will tow your car or they'll bring you gas in case you ran out of gas. It's indirect cost. Car maintenance, oil change, filter change, $500, that's for the car. Repairs, that's for the car. Depreciation, that's for the whole car. Gasoline, $3,500, that's considered indirect cost. Ticket for speeding, you got a ticket, you got pulled over by the police. There is nothing you can do with this. You cannot use it for anything, okay? So the automatic mileage will be 15,000 miles times the rate given by the IRS which could change from year to year plus the 250 direct cost plus the 120 direct cost equal to 10,210. Now we're gonna compute the actual cost using the actual cost. Well, how do we compute the actual cost? Well, for one thing, we're definitely going to include the direct cost. What we're gonna do for the remainder, we're gonna add them up, we're gonna add them up and take 80% of those. Add them up and take 80%. So if we take the direct cost plus all the indirect cost times the percentage use will give us 7,810. Which method should Adam use for the automatic mileage uh, for that particular year? The automatic mileage gives you 10,210. Now, if Adam uses the car 90% of the time, or if you have more expenditure, then the picture might have changed and you know the actual cost could have been, you just have to check, could be, could be higher. Now, some of these apps, they keep track of both and they recommend to you which one, which method to use. But what should you do now? What am I gonna recommend to you is go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs, true, false, that's gonna help you understand these concepts. Whether you are a CPA candidate, an enrolled agent, or an accounting student, invest in yourself, invest in your career. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.